Um, welcome to our um, Automation Lunch and Learner, third one for the series around human resource use cases. Uh, my name is Jake Robbins. I'll be the host for today and glad to be here. Um, in about one minute, I'll be sharing my screen for the presentation today. About 20 minutes will be, be um, kind of used to go, kind of go over the material in the presentation and the last 40 or so will be open for, for some demos and some uh, question and answer sessions. Uh, again, as I always say for these, these are totally for you guys, right? So if at any point in time you have a question, um, the Q&A and chat are both going to be monitored by myself and the other panelists here. So we're looking forward to engaging with you as much as possible, right? So at any point of time, if you have a question or, or want me to kind of elaborate on any points, just let me know um, and I will do so. Uh, just quickly, Mike or everyone, can you hear me okay? Yes. Perfect. And can you see my screen? We can. Yes. Awesome. So again, a little bit about today's agenda. We're going to start by kind of going over an overview of kind of why automation is cool and why we're here today to talk about it. Um, then a little bit of an overview of, of it as a, as a tool set, right? What, what excites us about it and why we love talking about it so much. Uh, a little bit into an industry overview and, and of, of course, going into those human resource uh, automation use cases that we kind of teased throughout this entire process so far. Um, a lot of exciting things at the end of this demo, so definitely stay for those for those demos at the end. We try to make these as interesting as possible so that you can kind of get the most out of it. Of course, as I say always, this is for you and the use cases are just demonstrations. Uh, if there is any point in time where you wanna ask if a certain use case in your own organization makes sense for automation, uh, feel free to contact us whenever you want. We're here for those, for those questions, right? This is a, as open of a dialogue as I can have over these webinars. So again, as much questions as you want, we love hearing it. We love to engage as much as possible. So with that being said, I'm gonna kind of give a brief overview of who I am. So I am Jake Robbins. I lead the automation delivery here, uh, practice here. Um, prior to joining Capital, I spent a, a, lot, a couple of years at Anheuser-Busch doing a lot of stuff in the supply chain area. But while I was there, I definitely learned and, and fell in love with technology enablement. Right, so I loved the first machine learning project. I was a business lead on a on a huge um, project implementation for a new forecasting system. I did a lot of automation around reporting and around um, general processes in the operations area. Um, for fun, I'm a huge traveler. I'm a really really big foodie. For anyone who knows me, um, and I'm glad to be here. So I've been doing automation since I was in middle school. So this is definitely a passion of mine, and I'm glad to be able to share that passion with you all today. Mike, yeah, awesome. Thanks, Shank. So I'm Michael McClure. I'm an RPA consultant here at eCapital Advisors. Uh, prior to working at eCapital, studied chemical engineering at Notre Dame, and then also worked at Anheuser-Busch. I've uh, got the chance to work alongside Jake. I'm working on some automation around reporting and KPIs, and I also got to spend a year as the brewery warehouse manager out in LA on the front line. I really found myself uh, kind of like Jake passionate about technology and implementing solutions to transform businesses. So I wanted to get more back into that, right? And RPA has been a great opportunity to do that just because it can really transform your day-to-day -day operation, really reduce the mundane repetitive task and boost employee morale. And it's really exciting to see. So um, we love talking about this stuff and excited to share it. Um, a little bit about me. Uh, like everyone else, I imagine I love traveling. Can't wait to get back to skiing and all that good stuff. Go to Italy. So uh, you can go to John next. Yep. Thanks, Mike. And John. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, John Kurth with eCapital. Uh, been with eCapital for two and a half years now, and I lead all of our uh, automation sales efforts. So uh, obviously, partner very close with. Jake and, and Michael, as well as our uh, clients to ensure that their automation objectives are achieved and, and ultimately uh, exceeded. Uh, before eCapital, spent some time at a web analytics and automation firm as well. And uh, outside of work, you can definitely find me uh, outdoors in doing really whatever activity uh, possible and, and uh, running around with, uh, with my yellow lab as, uh, as well. So. Uh, thank you so much for, uh, for everyone joining us here today. Um, before we get into kind of the meat of, of today's discussion around automation, one of the things that we really like to, to do here is uh, take a step back and really look at the, the macro of, of what's transpired here in um, the last 20 years and, and why is automation you know, so important and, and so empowering to, to our employees here today. 
And really where it all starts is around data. Uh, you just think of the amount of data in the last year and a half that's been readily available to us and blasted um, and what seems to be every media outlet uh, with, uh, with COVID in terms of infection rates to now uh, you know, vaccination rates and, and just how rapidly we had access to, to all of that information. And then you started looking at you know, business um, challenges with supply chain as we're all aware of. And I'm sure we'll touch on a little bit of uh, the great resignation that uh, it seems like we're seeing an article or two every, every day on. So with all of this information bombarding us each and every day, how can we cut through all that noise and, and really focus on what what matters and what's going to move the organization forward and ultimately ensuring that we are all uh, fulfilled as em employees. And, and that's really where eCapital uh, has focused over the, the last 20 years or, or so. And uh, I think you can flip to the next slide here, Jake, but um, we've implemented a ton of different solutions, best practices as those evolve over time as well, right? We've, we've seen the business environment and climate not only speed up the, the last couple of, of years, but um, with new curveballs and wrenches thrown in the mix uh, in the last year and a half with, uh, with COVID and who knows what, uh, what else is, is going to change. It, it continues to focus on, and we continue to focus on the, the employees and ensuring that your goals and objectives are, are always achieved. And we do that through really three main pillars or areas of expertise uh, for, for the business. And within performance management, a lot of times that historically is focused on the, the office of, of finance, but recently we've seen this huge rise in, in what's being coined the, the XP&A term, which is really all areas of, of the business and including HR that are looking to become more uh, performance driven and, and forecast the, the business outwards when we start just looking at, you know, workforce planning and, and I touched on the, the great resignation as well, you know, how many new people are we going to need to, to bring on to our organization this year and onboard? What are we expecting for, for offboarding? How can we forecast that out so that we can make the best decisions possible you know, for our organization. And that's really where automation can enable and, and strengthen and empower um, our existing systems, processes, and, and employees as, as well to improve, improve morale, which I know Jake will get to. But going back to that data conversation is we need systems and, and uh, solutions in place as well that we can have speed to access and, and insight to data as it becomes more available so that we continue to stay at least on top of the curve, if not hopefully more proactive and out in front of the, the curve as well. Um, and then lastly, from an advisory uh, perspective, helping our clients understand and, and gain alignment, not only with our HR team, but all the other departments and areas of the business that, that we work with, how can we all ensure that we're all marching forward, looking at the same information and, and are in agreement so we can have an apples to apples uh, discussion, if you will, on, on next steps and actions we as an organization need to, to take. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it back over to uh, Jake to get us kicked off with think his favorite question uh, it is. of all time, <laughs> Jake. Yeah. So, so unfortunately, um, obviously the communication isn't, isn't open with a, uh, with voice. So I'm going to kind of go quickly over this because I know you can't respond, but though I always like to start our conversations with kind of asking a question, right. To kind of set the stage and, and start to think about why automation is such a powerful tool, right? So the way I ask the question is if I could remove your least favorite hour of your work day and replace it with your most favorite, would you jump on the opportunity? And this is an important point, right? So what I mean by this is, is if I can automate some of these mundane, tedious tasks that you hate doing to free up your time so you can change your ways of work into something more productive and, and more freeing and something you actually want to do, would you want to do that? And I've never heard the answer no yet. So it, it seems ubiquitous across almost every organization we work with that there are some tasks that we we face every day because of the way our organization organization was set up that we really wish we could eliminate if we could. So 
that's a little bit of a brief kind of question that I want you to keep in your head, right? Are there things while you think through this, not just in HR, but in almost any vertical that I wish I didn't have to do, right? Because that's where automation really plays well. Uh, and what I see when I look at organizations as a whole and kind of how I start to, to picture it and kind of why automation exists, is that I look at these three common challenges, what I call the three C's, right? And the first one is consistency, right? Let's face it. We all have very confusing jobs. I'm sure we all wear multiple, multiple hats, right? Having a lot of different varied responsibilities, especially now if in this remote nature, feels like we're just keep adding and adding on things we need to do to make sure that, you know, our organization is are secure and that we're running properly, right? But with this need, right, we need to be perfect, right? There's this idea in our heads that everything we do needs to be perfection. Any error I cause can have a large downstream costs that I really don't want to associate it with myself, right? And the reason we see these errors, right, of course, it's human nature. We're all going to make mistakes. But as we keep adding these tool sets, right, enterprise tools, system as a software companies, right? All of these different things we add to our, what I'll call the enterprise quilt of applications, uh, the more trainings we need to kind of learn these tool sets. And at the same time, we see a dip in consistency, right? The more things we have to interact with, the greater chance we make an error in the process, right? Especially when we're moving data between those applications, right? Keystroke errors happen all the time. I am one of the worst proponents of that ever. Um, if you ever get an email from me, the odds of having a spelling mistake are great. And that is just shows, right, these simple things that we may not even notice um, really can cause downstream errors and cause these large um, costs to our organization. And the last and kind of the most important thing that comes with this consistency need and this complexity uh, and this increase in complexity is kind of this dip in culture, right? We see larger turnover rates. We see people becoming disengaged with the work, right? When, when someone needs to be perfect and we keep adding on more and more for them to do, we see this shift, right, where people start to look for other jobs, look for things that they can do instead, right? Maybe start um, giving off certain tasks to certain other employees so they don't have to do them themselves, right? People want to work on strategic projects. But when we have this need to be perfect and this complexity increase, we really don't see that happen as much as we used to. So when we look at it all together, right, and see how they interact, what I like to say is we have the employee's well-being in the center. And when we see them, those three things interacting, we can either have a really great um, culture where employees' well-being is, is definitely on the top or, or one where it's not, right? So if consistency, complexity, and culture are doing well, um, we see employees generally be very happy with who they are. If there's a need to be perfect and it keeps getting harder and harder to do our jobs and, and we just see people becoming disengaged and leaving the organization, that's when the, the general well-being of our employees kind of goes down. And we want to prevent this as much as we possibly can. So how do we do that, right? So the first thing I, I like to do is kind of look at some of the things we do from day to day, right? If we start to break down our days to understand kind of what we do and why we do it, we have a really good picture of what is potentially automatable so that we don't have to look at it again. So when we plot it out in terms of the difficulty of the task and how frequently we do it, things on the left-hand side, three-year planning, strategy conversations, business development, right? These are things that we don't believe will be automated anytime soon. Now, it's not that they can't be automated. It's just that they, they really do benefit from some type of human input. Now, the stuff on the right-hand side, these high-frequency, low-difficulty tasks, data entry, data set comparisons, following rule-based procedures, right? Handling reporting. This lends itself really well to automation. We kind of term this area, these high-frequency, low-difficulty tasks, as the automation sweet spot. Right? So what is the goal of automation? Obviously, there's a lot of different benefits that we'll have, and we'll definitely cover them today. But the way I like to see it, right, first and foremost, is we really are trying to strip away the mundane work and empower you and your teams to be the best versions of themselves. Right? This is where we really see organizations grow, morale get boosted up, and really this really transformational technology come into play to, to really move the organization forward. Any questions so far? Kind of why automation exists and... Uh, how we came to this place today where RPA is kind of one of the biggest booming industries out there. Give it about two, two uh, minute for questions if you have any. All right. So with that being said, what exactly is robotic process automation, right? We've been talking about automating these tasks and we've been saying how they can empower your organization and really cause this huge transformation, but what exactly is it, right? So for us, RPA is the software itself, which integrates into any environment and simulates employee actions. 
And this is kind of key, right? It isn't a scripting language. Back when I did this in middle school and when I did it a bit in college and in high school, uh, you really didn't need to know how to code, right? I would go read books on Python and JavaScript to understand certain different packages that were able to interact with web pages and applications to build out these small scripts I did for fun. Right. One of these scripts that I did for fun, I probably mentioned this before in the call, is I made a sweepstaking bot, right? Something that would um, uh, scrap Twitter or scrape Twitter for sweepstakes information and then enter them in once they found it, right? That ended up winning me $4,000 worth of prizes a month. But I did that through kind of learning how to code and learning how to develop, right? Now it's become much easier, right? Instead of working with the scripting language, we have these low code environments that allow us to really simulate employee actions. And what I mean by that is you're essentially creating a digital employee in the cloud for you, right? One with no HR department, someone who's who's ready and willing to act whenever you ask them to and finish the task 100% of the time. So what are the capabilities, right? Data entry, rule-based procedures, data extraction, data validation, report generation, emailing, as long as you can really think about it in your head of what application you want to interact with, RPA has become generalizable enough to interact with that tool. So again, we're speaking HR today. So what are some of those, those use cases in HR? Now, there's tons. And everything I could list here, you can always come up with more and more and more. And that's pretty much happens, especially within the HR department, because of how many tasks that we have to do, right? There are so many different vertical or areas of operation that an HR department will work in uh, that you tend to see all of these different use cases come up really quickly within human resource departments. So from a recruiting and talent management side, right, this is something I actually did in college as well and found RPA to be extremely beneficial in, in procuring the best talent, right? Doing rankings, uh, screening resumes to figure out who is the best candidate for us, scheduling interviews, right? Tracking interviews, making sure everyone's uh, following up to make sure that we've, we're, we are giving the, the interviewee as much information as we possibly can. All of that is incredibly automation heavy um, and really leads itself well to automation if we want, if you want to go down that path. Um, from a performance and development standpoint, right? Managing, you know, skill checklists, making sure people put in their targets, right? Managing the entire process for your performance is really automatable today. Uh, it's also a great way to kind of institute a uh, kind of a helper bot to, to really allow for people to, to capture all the information necessary from a performance and development standpoint. Um, from benefits and payroll, right? This is also huge when, when we onboard um, our employees to organization, setting up payroll systems, setting up 401k, um, dealing with stock options or open enrollment. Uh, RPA really does well with that. Um, any type of workforce data, right? Employee data entry, doing PTO, um, filling out tax forms, auditing payroll, right? Again, really tasks that we do all of the time. Um, automation tends itself really well to these areas as well. Um, and of course, in a compliance standpoint, right? If I need to find a doctor for myself, if I want to make sure that employee health is good, if I'm uh, all of the reporting is done from a labor audit perspective, um, all of that stuff really well, uh, tends itself well to automation. Again, the amount of use cases we can go over, we can spend days and days and days talking about these. Essentially, as long as you have something in your head in the HR department that you really want to automate, you probably can do it today. As far as what we look for as kind of these first use cases, again, those really frequent tasks that are more mundane, we really like to, to throw automation to, right? So recruiting, selection, and onboarding, those are three of the things we'll talk about today and some of the demos, right? Super powerful um, use cases with automation because you're able to, again, screen more employees than you would ever will be um, just by doing it by hand and by eye, right? From an operation standpoint, managing payroll systems, managing time, again, anything from a master data or from an HR master data perspective, automation plays really well in. Um, there are, again, tons more, and I don't want to spend too much time going over all the potential because I'd rather spend time in the demos today kind of showing to you firsthand. Um, but before I kind of go off and, and almost get to the demo portion of today, I do want to say that as long as a process can be mapped, it can be automated. This is probably the one catchphrase I want you to take away from this conversation today. Um, and this is really important, right? Obviously, we're here today to talk about HR, but essentially almost every part of an organization can use RPA in some, in some facet, right? And, and the key is, I'm not going to go over all the cases today, but is if you can really map it out in your head, right, or draw it out on a board or draw it out on a whiteboard, you'll be able to automate it as freely as you want. So why should you be excited, right? There's a lot of talk about this. You've probably read papers on it at this point. But the first and, and foremost um, reason for me is that improved employee morale, right? Every project we worked on and every project I've ever been um, 
in touch with RPA. I've always seen this huge morale boost once finishing, right? I think we've seen results from this is the best thing in my entire life. Thank you so much for saving my time. So this is transformational, right? And that's because once people see this in action, it's really hard to go back. Having this sidekick ready for you, working alongside you at all times of the day to make sure your process is done and le almost letting you relax on some of this mundane tasks is really, really, really powerful to anyone who, who uses it alongside them. From an RI perspective, again, these things are super, super productive, right? Uh, bots can execute processes at least you know three to 10 times faster. Um, the one kind of cool fact I know for sure is that bots type two times faster than the fastest human can, right? So even basic stuff, right? Because of that productivity that you gain, everything will go faster with a bot. Um, they're also super reliable, right? You don't have to worry about a sick day. You don't have to worry about them taking off. You don't have to worry about any errors, right? They're going to follow the process that you kind of designed from the, from the onset and follow it consistently 100% of the time, right? And because of that, you get this also consistency boost, right? Full auditability on everything it's doing. So you really understand kind of what movements it's making to allow your organization to stay afloat. The next two kind of come hand in hand, right? Uh, these, in, these solutions are not invasive. Uh, you can either procure them through a cloud system or on-premise. You really have an opportunity to kind of set it up as, as any way that you want. Um, it tightens controls to improve governance, right? You have role-based action controls to really limit kind of who can use certain aspects of the, of the tool. You have things like credential vaults to keep um, security safe. And of course, everything is auditable to really give you full visibility into what the bots are doing. It's a super low technical barrier. You'll see this today firsthand. Again, this is really cool. From someone who had to do this by hand before, having the ability to drag and drop um, activities onto a play map, so to speak, uh, really does allow you to, to, for almost anybody to learn this tool, right? And that's some of the stuff that we love doing, right? We love teaching this stuff, having someone sit alongside us, code along with us, understand how this can be used so they can really empower their organizations um, from the grassroots level. And lastly, they're accurate, right? You don't have to worry about errors. You don't have to worry about how complex the process is. Everything is just gonna flow as you expect it to. So from an industry standpoint, right? And this is more to kind of talk that where are we as an industry as a whole, right? So nearly nine out of 10 companies, uh, this is from 2019, it's only gone up, have implemented RPA or AI into their business, right? This is continually to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow, right? And, and the point of me showing this slide is to say that you're not alone in this, right? If this is something that interests you and that, and that you fall in love with, like I have, or have like Mike has, right? You're not the only person who's fell in love with this technology. Almost every aspect of every job has some form of RPA or is trying to develop some form of RPA in the near future. Again, even when we look across um, use cases, we see that, right? If we look at the planning and development in two to five years range, right? Again, this is from 2019. It's 80% across the board, right? Even in human resources, where again, we say technology take a little bit more time to develop, we see 70 to 80% planning on actually developing um, some type of bot process within the organization. So why is that, right? Again, in 2017, and this number has only gone up as, as the software becomes cheaper and cheaper to use, uh, we saw a 30 to 200% ROI on your first bot in the first year. Again, it's really hard to see these ROIs that quick with other technology. And because of this, alongside the improved employee morale and everything else that comes along with automation, we really see companies really taking a hold of this technology to kind of figure out how it can fit in their own in their own playbook, so to speak. So with that being said, that's all of from a presentation side I have today. We're going to spend, like I said earlier, the next 30 minutes kind of going over some demos and opening up to Q&A at the end. But before I do so, I know we went over a lot of content pretty quickly. Does anyone have any questions? Awesome. So without further ado, I'm going to pass it on to Mike to kind of spearhead the demo for today. Awesome. Thanks, Jake. And I always get to say I get to do the exciting part, which is actually showing off the tool uh, automation anywhere in the software. So can you see my screen all right? Yep. Cool. Perfect. All right. So like Jake was saying, um, this is a cloud-based platform and also on-premise, but most people do opt to go with cloud because it is really the only true RPA software out there that is really cloud-based. So we can log in here, just a URL that is given to you unique to your company. And then uh, you can access your code anywhere, which is an awesome awesome feature. And then this entire screen here is where everything occurs, administration, bot development, um, passwords, all that. So I will go through this really quickly before we get into um, the specific HR use case demos, right? 
So over here on the left, we kind of have our navigation portal. We have home, we have just some information. You can see Jake and I make a bunch of bots and uh, how long it takes to make them, actions used. Uh, we have discovery bot here, which is actually uh, machine learning enabled and it helps you identify processes that can be automated. And then our next machine learning ability that we have in automation anywhere is gonna be this IQ bot learning instance. And I'm gonna to speak to this. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have enough time today to really dive into it, but we are gonna use the output of this process for one of our HR demos. So to explain what IQ bot is, it's really cool. It uses optical character recognition or OCR combined with machine learning in order to extract data that you normally wouldn't be able to. So when I, that's a lot of words, but this is what it really means in HR case. You have a bunch of resumes with in a PDF format, and you can't really extract this data without a human actually looking at it. Until now, you can use IQBot to train it to extract data from resumes that you're getting and then output that to a nice clean Excel table so you can manipulate, search, index that data, right? So especially when you're doing recruiting at a university, you can just get a lot of paper PDFs. And the only way to really store that data is for someone to look at it and type it in um, or to use a solution like this, which is great, built into automation anywhere. So we can use that to extract data. And you'll see that in a demo later, what we're going to do with that data that we extract from resumes. So that's it's really cool. And then before we get into the automation part, I want to highlight some of the um, administration IT stuff, right? So we can see what's currently running, historically what has ran. We can manage our devices that everything runs on. We have Credential Vault. This is always a question. How do we manage passwords, right? How do we automate when we need to log into something? Um, you can have an administrator IT input passwords here, and only they have access to it. And then when your bot creators want to use the passwords, they will just see something like Salesforce password, but they won't be able to see its actual value and it's all encrypted. So that's how security works. So IT can manage your passwords and your developers can use them without actually accessing what that value what that password value is, right? And then administration is, this is all user role-based, right? So you have bot developer role, bot runner role, admin role. You can create these and assign these to people to do their given task in it. So that's a high level overview. Before I get into the automation, I do wanna just talk about automation in general and why we choose to partner with them. So I can really sum it up into three things. One is gonna be flexible pricing and scalability, right? So there's packages you can enter at the level you want to, and then expand and grow at your own pace, which is really convenient. Number two is gonna be the most built-in capabilities out of any RPA vendor. Um, I'll show that off when I go into the bot here to do some automation, but it's really shocking how much they have built in. And there's even more that you can download um, from the bot store, they call it. And it has over 1500 additional packages. So a lot of built-in capability that's amazing and makes development quick. And then finally, and probably most important to Jake and I is ease of use. So what I mean by that is people ask Jake and I all the time, to make a bot, do I need to have a four-year computer science degree? Do I need, or a really tech heavy background? The answer is no, if you're using automation anywhere because of how user-friendly it is. So I came into our automation section and I opened just a blank bot here. And this is where all the bot development takes place. And to talk about that ease of use, like Jake said, 10 years ago, when you're doing this scripting, if you wanna open an Excel document and read in the data, if you don't have experience with programming, you may never accomplish this task, or it may take you hours and hours to do the Googling and debug and figure it out. So it's really time consuming. Automation Anywhere has streamlined that entire experience. I like to call these packages on the left our building blocks that we just linked together, right? We're not developing these packages. We're not doing all this intense coding. We're just linking these built-in functions, building blocks together, right? So to go off my other example, say I wanted to open Excel and read in that data. With Automation Anywhere, I can just type in Excel into my actions here, and you can see all these built-in Excel actions. So I know I need to open the document, so I see Excel open, drag and drop it in here. And you can see there's two views here, list and flow. Flow will give you more of a, you know, draw.io, and list is more script-like um, if you're more used to that. It's all personal preference and it's nice to have both, right? So we just exit, we just drag and drop in our building blocks here and then we just pass in parameters. It's really simple, right? So we just tell it what file path and you can just browse like you would normally do, give it a file path. If we wanted to read in that data, we can type in data table, Excel advanced, get worksheet as data table. We just would say, hey, save all this data 
into a data table and the worksheet, and then we can close it, right? So you can see everything is quick here, drag and drop. And there's so many built-in packages other than Excel, right? So say we need to interact with the browser. We can search browser and we can find everything we need. Open a browser, right? Go back on the browser. And it's just really easy drag and drop. All I need to do is provide it the link, right? I'm not coding this up on how to open Google Chrome and do all that. I'm just providing the link so it's really easy. Um, if you do have that programming experience though, there are more advanced things, right? So if you wanted to do a project where you're using RPA combined with machine learning and Python, you have that ability to, right? So you have really low level code. And if you have that experience, you can also do more advanced uh, procedures, Python, machine learning, really integrate a lot of stuff in here. Uh, again, SQL, SQL is in here as a downloadable package. There's so much in here. I could go through this for hours and hours and never get through it. But that is the basics. And there's one more thing I do want to show off before we get to the demo. So I'm going to show off the recorder. And this is really how the bot is simulating human actions and interacting. So I'm going to delete all these. And I'm going to hit this button here that's going to be start recording. You can see I opened just a Yahoo page here. I'm going to point the bot and say I want to interact with this page. And I'm going to say do universal recording. And see as I navigate through this page, it's picking up elements for me. And it, that's how it's figuring out what, it, what it's recording, what it's automating. So say I wanted to come to Yahoo, search for the Cardinals game, enter, and I can hit finish recording. And you'll see over here, all that automation has already been built for me. So you can see it recorded everything I did. It found the element that I wanted to interact with just because I clicked on it. And now if I go ahead and run this, well, do exactly as you expect. It's going to search Cardinals game. So that's what I mean. It's low barrier, right? Anyone can record themselves doing actions and it auto generate the code. And this is really what we're talking about simulating human actions. This web browser doesn't know that we're a bot doing this. It truly is um, acting like a human. So it's going to do exactly what I coded Cardinals game going. Awesome. So that's kind of just a high level overview of what automation anywhere looks like, what the coding looks like, and how it works. Drag and drop, simple to use, record your actions and get them in here, right? So that's why we choose to partner with Automation Anywhere. It's a really powerful tool. And with that, I'm gonna go back to do our specific use cases for these demos, right? So human resources demos, we wanna highlight specifically that today in RPA use cases. We've chosen three. So when we look at HR, right, we know anyone that's done this knows that there's a lot of repetitive and mundane processes that can really be time consuming and frustrating. And we wanna eliminate that as much as possible and streamline anyone's job. So the first process in HR is really that talent acquisition, right? So kind of what I was saying earlier with the IQ bot, we have all, the, all this information, PDFs, resumes, how do we organize this? How do we find the right candidates after we have all this data? Uh, so we're gonna show off a demo with that. And then after we find our talent, we wanna hire someone, there's a bunch that goes into onboarding and it's really repetitive every time, but it's also constantly updating, right? 2021 document becomes a 2022 document from the government, and there's a lot to manage there. And typically, it's going to be role-based, right? If you're a forklift driver, you're probably going to have different onboarding than if you're a sales rep. So is there a way we can automate that process, make onboarding easier, streamline it? Uh, RPA can do that. And then finally, scheduling, right? A lot of times we want to share our calendar or our availability or other people's availability for interviews externally. And the way Outlook handles it just isn't very clean and it's not very customizable. And also when you're dealing with college students, most of them don't have Outlook. So is there a way we can, again, streamline scheduling, automate it, and also make it better than what's available in Outlook? And that's what we've done here. So we're gonna go through and show that. So first off, talent acquisition. So this is really trying to find the right candidates so we can hire them. And is there a better and faster way to find the correct talent we're looking for? Yes, with RPA. So here's the process that we've built out. As I talked about before, again, the IQ bot is going to send a output of data from resumes. We're going to create a attended bot that's going to work with an HR employee in order to find the candidates that they want for the role that they're looking for, right? So this is going to be your digital sidekick. It's going to help you do this way faster and also distribute the data, find who you're looking for and distribute it. So we schedule the bot to run. We ask the recruiter what they're looking for. We go through our IQ bot data. We find people who match that skill set. Then we email that out to any manager, us, right? Maybe, you know, IT comes to you and says, hey, we're looking for someone to do this. 
you run this and you email it to them. That way that manager has a list of all the people we have on file that fit the skill set they're looking for. So with that, I'm gonna pop back into Automation Anywhere and show off this demo. So I will leave this page, come back to our demos folder here, and we will find HR search and email. You can see this process, this demo is only 53 lines of code. So these are, again, not it's not super hard, complicated and long to build out these, right? Um, it's a lot more approachable these days, especially with automation than people would expect. So with this, I do wanna show off kind of what we're looking at first. So what we have here is resume data that we pulled from that OCR extraction. We have all this data that was just automatically pulled. It is just generic made up, but you can see we have who they are, where they went to school, where they're currently located, degree, work experience, skills, all that, and then pass to their resumes and also their LinkedIn profiles. So we're gonna index this and then send it out. You can see we also have everyone's resume in here. That way we can share that as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit run here and run this bot. Like I said, it's attended, so it's gonna ask me for the prompt and then it's gonna use that. So name to search, in this case, I'm don't, not looking for a specific person, not looking for a specific school, but let's say we have a new office opening in Chicago. Let's find people that are currently in Chicago and then send that out. So I'll leave everything else blank. And then who we're going to email for this case, just for the demo, it's always going to be me. But like I said, you can always email this to the direct manager. And you can see it's already done. So bots are really quickly. There's only 50 lines of data in here. If you add, you know, 2000 resumes, it would definitely take longer, but it's quick. And you can see we already got the email. So you got to open this up. So we sent this to ourselves. We have a Excel table here and we have our candidates. Right. So we have everyone that has applied to us and is from Chicago in here. And then also we went ahead and sent them their resumes at the same time. So that manager can get this data really quickly. I mean, that bot took two seconds to run. We can do another example too, just really quick to show um, some other ways you can use this, right? So I'll go back to my case. IT manager is looking for someone, let's say they need to manage their SQL database. So I'll say work experience IT. We want someone that's already worked in IT before we don't want someone new with skills to search for. They're gonna be managing databases. So we definitely need them to know SQL. And then again, shoot this off to myself. Right, already runs. And then we'll just wait for the email. There we go. And awesome. You can see this time we still have the same file, two resumes, but this time we have IT was in their title at some point, and they also both have SQL skills. So we can streamline that, but the immediate question becomes basically, right, we have this data and we have this nice table, but how are you going to keep this updated? People are constantly moving jobs, new roles, picking up new skills. How do you how do you manage that without getting a new resume and restarting the whole process of doing the OCR to extract data? Well, once we have their LinkedIn profile, we can actually use that to update our database table. So in this example here, I'm going to go ahead and move over. And for this, I just have Jake and I's profile because I didn't want to share LinkedIn profiles without people's permission and all that. So we're going to go through Jake and I's. You can see resume data. This would be our table that we had earlier. We can see that there's blank information here, right? Um, Jake doesn't have a school. I don't have a work experience. And also Jake doesn't work at Anheuser-Busch anymore. So this is out of date, right? But we have the LinkedIn profiles. So can we use that to update this automatically? Answer is yes. So I have the updated table here. You can just to prove these aren't hard coded in. I didn't cheat and add these before time. So that's blank. We're going to go ahead and run our LinkedIn bot and just scrape that data and update everyone's profile that we have. And you can customize this to your organization too, right? What do you want to update? What fields do you want to pull all that? So I'll go ahead and just run it and it will open LinkedIn, scrape that data, update that data table. And now we have updated information from that person's work experience, education, all that. So it's going to go to my profile, pull out my education, my most recent work title. Done. So now it's going to go to Jake's and do that exact same thing. And then it will check if the data matches. If it doesn't match, it'll update it and throw it back into that table. And see it's already done so if we go back to the table that we just updated we should see information all right so jake now has a school his title was updated 
it's no longer an Anheuser Bush, and mine was also updated. So that's a way. Once you have someone's LinkedIn profiles, you can basically update them forever as long as they're updating their LinkedIn profiles, and you don't have to pay for a service or some licensing fee for something else, right? You already have automation anywhere. You're using bots. You might as well use it to its fullest to do something like this as well. So really cool um, capabilities there. So that's the first demo. Now we're going to go to new employee setup. Like I was talking about before onboarding, there's all these processes that happen in onboarding. Can we automate some of these? And the answer is yes. Again, we have this attended bot, which is going to be your sidekick. So you're going to tell it what's the new employee, what's the employee's manager, what's their role. And just from that, it's going to grab all the documents or all the information there. Like I said, customize your organization. They could be links to documents they need to fill out. They could be the PDFs, the documents, however your onboarding is, you customize it to that and then you can automate and streamline it, right? So again, we schedule the bot, ask HR, find the documents and send it. So we will navigate back to our folder. We will do HR onboarding. So I will set this up again to kind of look at how we built this file structure. So HR onboarding. Don't need that. It's actually gonna be in here, right? So we have zipped files, just another capability automation anywhere. It, deals with zipped files, no problem built in. So we have a zipped file and these are gonna be zips of everything that person needs in order to be onboarded. So you can see we have some different roles here, assistant, forklift driver, market analyst, planner, sales rep, they'll all have different onboarding processes. So go ahead and run the bot. It's gonna ask me the email of the new employee, again, just for this case, so I actually get it. It's gonna be to me. manager, I'm going to set Jake's email and he'll be CC'd on this. And then employee's new role. In this case, it's going to be for the driver. So it's going to go ahead and take that information, get the documents it needs, extract the zip, and then send them off an email, right? So instead of having to track down the documents for that specific role, or maybe having to update them, they're in one place, they stay updated. And then you can just email them out when the person completes that onboarding process. And unfortunately, we're always, you know, at the will of Outlook and their servers to send emails, but there we go. Finally, it's going to come across now. There you go. So we just have the documents, a welcome message. Hey, um, congratulations on being accepted. Here's your onboarding instructions on what you need to do. Here's who your manager is, all that, right? So just streamline the process so someone doesn't have to manually grab all these documents and do that. So that can help um, definitely speed up. And again, just really repetitive. It's going to be the same thing. Every forklift driver has to do the same things. Why not automate that? So with that, that is the third use case that we have. And then we're going to go and and do scheduling. So like I said, especially a lot of times you want to, you have multiple people with multiple availabilities and you're trying to find a time that works. And a lot of times when you're dealing with interviews, you're dealing with people externally. And again, students probably don't have an outlook and you can't check their availability. So what's the best way for us to share our availabilities in the easiest and readable way possible, right? So we're able to do this with RPA. And this is exactly what I was talking about. This is what it currently looks like in Outlook when you look at one person's calendar and try to export it. Not very easy to read. It's not quick to see what's available. And if you wanted to combine calendars or share this externally, like I said, they might not have Outlook, so it might not be as useful to them. Is there a way we can get just a visual that's a lot easier to read and quickly identify, okay, you're green this time, green this time, green this time, and also combine calendars, right? If I wanted to combine multiple people's calendar and check availability, we could do this like with custom code. And this so, is something I personally do all the time, right? So I made this and I call these kind of utility bots, right? There are things that other people in the organization may do all of the time. And it's something you can offer as a service almost from an HR perspective to allow people to use, right? Say, hey, if you want your calendar to look nice, send an email to this direct, you know, this, your, uh, this email or this special DL, and it can process these requests for you, right? It's really nice because you start to, you start seeing HR as this, you know, not only people keeping the, the, 
the business afloat, but offering new capabilities to help with things that we all face. Awesome. Yeah. So for this process overview, we're going to send an email request. It's going to be that Outlook calendar. The bot's going to read, receive the email, read it, use Python. Like I said, automation anywhere is very cool because you can integrate Python and other scripts in it. So you, really the capabilities are almost limitless. Um, we're going to use Python to parse this data out and then go to Excel. I should use some VBA code and make that readable calendar that you saw earlier. Then we'll send out a nice email of it. So let me go ahead and jump over to that demo. Back to automation, demo folder, HR, talent scheduling. So like I said, it's going to be on the lookout for an email. That's how it knows it needs to process it, right? So it's going to look in this folder for unread emails when it runs. So what I'm going to do right now, send myself an email and insert just my calendar for the next seven days. If I want to generate that nice calendar view for myself, all I would have to do is this bot would be looking at this inbox constantly and just do it. So I could do it at any time I wanted to. So I'm going to send that off and I'm also going to hit run on this. So we can see that, that message came across. You're going to see it's going to go from unread to un, unread to read right now. That's the bot doing it. It's going to take that email data, clean it up for us in here because we don't like the format that it's in. And then it's going to go ahead and run Python. So we have a Jupyter notebook that came up that's going to run some Python script for us. You can see the code here. It runs it really quickly and nicely. And then we take this extracted data and we're going to use this to run VBA code in order to generate this nice calendar and then email it back out. So you can see here, Automation Anywhere doing a lot of different stuff, right? Working with your email, working in Excel, with VBA, working in Python, and that's why we love it, right? It's the glue between all these applications that your organization has. It doesn't care what you're interacting with, it generally has the built-in capability to do it. So really exciting stuff. So I will go ahead and check that email. Your schedule is ready for you to share. And you can see it's just this. So I could send this out and say, hey, this is my availability for the week. Um, let me know when you're free for an interview, something like that, uh, or anyone in the organization can get this. And it's just a great tool to have. Um, when you when you get started with automation, you just find that there's so many processes you can do. And with automation anywhere and kind of how the contracting works, you find that you generally have more time on the bots than you initially scope out. So you can do things like this, that it's just a service, right? This isn't going to completely change your organization, but using it in this way, you can leverage, you know, your bot time, your licensing, you can do more and they're quick and easy to do, right? This code is 31 lines. It doesn't take a crazy expert to do these. And there's so many cool opportunities out there that can really just make people happy to go to work. And I think that's really Jake and I's passion and goal is that we want to make people happy to go to their job and enjoy it. And RPA lets us do that and really cut out some of that Monday. So with that, that's most of what we have. I want to leave the last nine or so minutes open for questions or um, if Jake, you want to add anything as well. Yeah, we, if there are no questions, we have one more demo we can share, but we do want to give time for questions just in case um, anyone has anything they want to ask us now. So give them everyone a couple of seconds. All right, okay, another 30 seconds. If no one has any questions, we can move on to one extra demo that we have prepared. Okay, so we'll do one more quick demo that I have ready for today. Um, and what this is, is I'm going to showcase some new functionality in Automation AWOL called Ari. And Ari is, just like we were showing earlier with those you know, prompt boxes, Ari is even better than that, right? It's this digital assistant um, that you can uh, you can purchase through Automation Anywhere that helps 
really handle a lot of the work that we may do day to day. So the example I have today for is uh, scheduling doctor's appointments, right? So I'm going to hit play and I'm going to kind of talk to the uh, the demo as it goes, right? So imagine we we have a process that we need to be able to um, schedule people's doctor's appointments um, when they first you know, start up for, let's say, a forklift driver role. We need to make sure that they're healthy. So through this RE platform, right, which is a, uh, a new um, type of functionality in automation where we can create these kind of subtasks that you hit, like, like this is doing a launch button, and it asks you for information to really manage the, um, inform, you know, the different applications and different tool sets that we use, right? So what this, per, what this uh, task is doing, it's going to log into all of the kind of applications it needs to log into for the, for the, for the day to, to kind of handle this um, appointment scheduling for doctors kind of use case. So I'm going to type in all the information that needs that we need. And then we're going to hit that submit all button. And what that will actually do is we'll actually start the process going. So we're going to log into service decks now and also ZocDoc with the credentials we provided. So great, it's almost instantaneous. Again, no surprise there. Right, we, we've kind of seen already today how quick bots can perform tasks, right? So when that's done, we may want to find a doctor and set up an appointment, right? So we can click that button on the right-hand side, again, just right from the, the bot assistant and hit launch. And it will walk us through that, uh, that kind of process, right? We'll give, you know, what our number is, who the name of the person is, right? Zip codes, appointment dates. And what this will actually do is it will work within the ZocDoc application and, and start to pull out information that we want to we want to provide, right? So once we say, hey, we're looking for a primary care provider and hit the button, it's going to actually do that search for us in the city we provided. Great, we see that accomplish. And now it's going to start to parse the website for different um, information here to really help populate uh, the tool itself with some of the availabilities that we see. Okay, we're going to search through this list and find someone that looks good to us. And now that we're here and this looks good, we're going to hit the copy doctor details. And this will actually run down and, and copy all the information that we need. Now we're ready to select an appointment time. So we're going to select a time. And any notes we want to add. Again, this is totally customizable, right? So imagine you have this for any process you have on the HR side, right? You can have this digital assistant working alongside you whenever you want, helping streamline the applications that you run. So great, it's going to actually book us the appointment now. Again, faster than any human can. And now we're going to send the email off to our employee to tell them it's all done. Again. Pretty seamless, right? You see yourself working within a, an assistant that's really walking you through the process. Again, just to continue to showcase how user friendly the uh, Automation Anywhere platform is. Um, so, with that being said, that's a little bit of an extra demo with uh, some of the more new functionality that keeps getting added to Automation Anywhere. Of course, again, with with a tool set like Automation Anywhere, you'll see capabilities like RE or, or IQ Bot or Discovery Bot continually to get tweaks. Uh, as they continue to develop the tool set. Um, with that being said, I know we have four minutes left and that's kind of covers all of the demos that I have today. So with the last three minutes, I'll ask one more time, do we have any questions, any concerns, um, anything you want me to go over within the last couple of seconds we have here? Awesome. So if we have no other questions, I'll give everyone three minutes back. It's been a pleasure to talk with you this morning. Again, we love doing this. We love uh, showcasing some of the power of automation and, and kind of we, we always have fun developing these use cases. You know, everything is customizable. So if you didn't see something today that catches your eyes, just let us know, right? We'll, we're able to kind of showcase some tool sets that maybe more, more closely aligned to what you're trying to do. Again, really appreciate the time. No, it's busy with the end of the month or end of the quarter coming up. So appreciate y'all joining and looking forward to talking to you again soon. Uh, with that being said, I bid you farewell and look forward to speaking again soon.